Everybody okay, mute themselves. Uh, suggestion. And we will pause for a minute in between the two blocks so that we can break it up into two days. Okay. Kumla in the block Gemara. We are learning today the block of Shmini Atzeres, which is Dav Chov Ches Amal Aleph, the very top of the page, the Mishnah. Rabbi Huda Ayman, Rabbi Huda says, Shaykel Adam Basa, if you want to weigh, you're not allowed to weigh things on Yom Tov because it's Uvdin Dechel, or Shabbos, it's a weekday activity. But one, according to Rabbi Huda, one can weigh Basa, meat, Keneged Hakli. You put a, another vessel on there somewhere, and then you put the meat on the other side. It's not the normal way of weighing things. It's not the normal way to, to use. So Rabbi Huda says, because you're making a major change, you can't do that. Or you can neged hakoyfit. So let's say there's kind of an axe, and you know there's a sharp edge on one side. It's not common to weigh things against that, and therefore it is permitted. The chachamim, I mean the chacham disagree. They say ein mashgichin bekaf maznaim kol ikel. You cannot use a scale at all on yom tif because it is uvdin um, dechel. It's a weekday activity. Says the Gemara. My colleague, what do you mean at all? What are they trying to add? You have absolutely no intention of weighing the meat, but you want to put it on the scale to lift it up so the mice can get to it. Even that is forbidden. Because in the meantime, you are weighing it and it looks like a weekday activity. Provided it's hanging on the normal hook that you have the scale on. So it looks like you are weighing. Rabbi Huda says the name is Shmuel. Tabach Umen. A butcher, or skilled butcher, for him, Osir Lishka Bosabiyad. He cannot even weigh meat in his hand. Uh, like he has, for example, he has the, the meat in one hand and another piece of meat in another hand. And he, he has a, you know, a, a liter of meat, a certain measure of meat, and he has another meat. He right away knows exactly what the other meat weighs. Another, another person might not, but he does, because he does this all the time. So therefore, for him, that's considered weighing, and he shouldn't be doing that either. Tabach Umen, so too a skilled butcher. Also, Lishko Basu Bemais. That you're not allowed to. They used to have these kind of a vessels where you had these markings, and he had water in there, and you place a piece of meat in there, and it would raise the volume of the water. And if the water reaches a particular marking, you know exactly what the size of the meat is because you you subtract the water, and you know exactly what it is. It's specifically made for that, and that is again. A way of measuring, and that is forbidden on Yom Tov. So too, in those days, they didn't think about bags. They were very worried about the, the, the environment. So what they did was they would they would make a hole in the meat wide enough to put your finger through, and that's how you carry the slab of meat uh, inside your finger. You're not allowed to do that on Yom Tov again because it looks like you're doing a sale, and that is forbidden. <clears throat> if you made that hole, putting your finger through it, now, you didn't use a knife to carve out the hole. You just use your finger to it. Sorry? You can tell straight away if you did it with your finger, it's not a smooth hole. So it, it looks very jagged, and therefore you can tell it wasn't done professionally. <clears throat> uh, remember, the whole thing is Uvdin Dechel, so we're not so uh, particular about these things. It's a, it's a much less severe area. But mutter last says simon bebas. We had not bomb or have bomb it. That you know, we also had it all about bossashinis alum and ayin. Meat is being freighted across. So I agree, we're concerned that maybe they swapped the kosher meat for non-kosher meat. So we had so we had a whole discussion there about having two seals on the meat. But the Rabbah Barabhuna used to cut the meat in a certain shape that it, therefore everyone right away recognized, oh, this is Rabba's meat. He used to cut it in a triangle. And that you're allowed to do on Yom Tov. He made a, a triangle. And that you're allowed to do. Um, <clears throat> everyone recognizes this. It's not, it's not the same thing as Uvdin Lecha. Tell the Gemara Rabchia, Rabchia, who was a student of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, and Rab Shimon, and Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi had a son called Rab Shimon. And uh, we'll learn about him in the end of Ksubis, what Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi wanted he should do in his future. So Rabchia and Rab Shimon Berebi, Shaiklin mana connected mana. They would they would buy meat together and then they would just divide it. So they would put two pieces of meat and say, Well, you get this similar size, and I'll take this one. The yamtiv and yamtiv says the gemara, how can you do that? We just finished saying that you cannot do anything that seems like measuring or weighing. And they did exactly that. They put two slabs of meat, they, oh, it looks like the same size. You take that and I'll take this. 
command. This seems to be not like Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbanu. Forget about the Rabbanu. They say you can't do any way, but even not like Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda yeah. did not allow it unless he did something which is out of the ordinary. And this seems to be totally wrong. <laughs> Says the Gemara. Uh, Says the Gemara. Um, <clears throat> and the Gemara Benny. Are you there? Can you mute your microphone, Benny? Says the Gemara. Ike Rabbi Yehuda, if we follow Rabbi Yehuda, he says, you can only weigh against a some kind of a pot, is an act which is not the normal way. But against another piece of meat, quite normal, you cannot do that. And Ike Rabbonon, and if they follow the Rabbonon, Ha'amri, you not use a, a measuring thing at all, a scale at all. So what's going on here? So Gemara says, Inu the Ovid There's actually a third opinion, which is not recorded in our Mishnah, not Rabbi Huda, not Chamin, not Rabbi Shua. And he's very relaxed. The Tanya Rabbi Shua, I mean, Rabbi Shua said, Shoiklin mana keneged mana be yamtiv. He said that on yamtiv, you're allowed to measure one piece of meat against another piece of meat. Comes along Rabbi Yasef, and he says, now that we have three opinions, Rabbi Yehuda Chacham were very strict, and Rabbi Shua was very relaxed. Halacha ki Rabbi Shua. Halacha is like Rabbi Shua that you can go ahead and measure even against another piece of meat. And how do I know that? Because hoyel betnan bebchayres kavose. We learned in the laws of chayres very similar to um to uh, and, and even though it's talking about a bchay, nothing to do with yamtiv. But the idea of how you sell a bchay, a bchay is, is is considered a sacred animal. It is kachim, and um. You have to wait till the contract's a moon before the coin can use it for his own personal use. But yet he's not allowed to weigh it and treat it like a normal, like normal merchandise, because that is considered an insult to Kutchin. It's a Brazilian Kutchin. We cannot do that. And, uh, and you have to behave. And yet it says over there, you're allowed to measure one piece of meat against another. And, 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 and therefore, you know exactly what the weight of it is and so on. So we see from here that, that it's not considered just like you do for a B'chay, Rabbi Shua says, so therefore Rabbi Shua is right, and Yom Tov could do it as well. Says the Gemara, Hoyil betanan b'chay, G'vaz 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 when it comes to a carbon that contracted the moon. So what does Hegdash do with the carbon? They sell it. They sell it, and uh, not everybody buys an entire animal. So they shech the animal, and they sell, you know, they sell meat piece by piece, and um, and 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 we allow hegdish to sell it properly because we want the hegdish to maximize the amount of money that they can they can make from this because all the money is going to hegdish. So we're happy to be relaxed about the different ways of selling it in order that Hegdish maximizes the money. But when it comes to Pchayr, it stays with the Koyin. It stays, so why in the world should we help the Koyin out and allow him to insult Kachim to make more money? Private thing. So therefore, we don't allow him. But yet, the Shaykhli Monday can give up Pchayr. Yet, we allow by a Pchayr. The person, you know, they, they have another piece of meat there that we know exactly what the size of the meat are. And then they take the Pchayr and they marry and match it up. And they say, well, this meat is the same as that. So it's one liter. This meat like that is a kilo, two kilos, three kilos. And pay accordingly. So we see that even when you're not allowed to do certain things because of bizarre, but you're allowed to measure one piece against another. So same thing with Yamtav. Of course, Rabbi Yasef says something, Abaya will never let him finish the sentence. So Amal Abaya. Abaya immediately jumps at him and he says, What are you talking about? I don't see at all an analogy or any parallels between the laws of Khair and the laws of Yamtav. And I'll show you the difference. I can go both ways. But Dilmalahi, perhaps there's no comparison whatsoever. And therefore, I cannot assume that Allah is like Rabbi Shuh. Why is that? Ad kan lo kerabi shuh. You know what? Rabbi Shuh is very relaxed and yamte the lack of bezayin kachim. He's not insulting kachim kabbanas here at all. It's just it's it's a process on yamte. We don't like you doing it because it's considered a weekday activity. So he says, but measuring one piece of meat against another is not such a weekday activity. It's not the most common way of weighing things in the store. I will hustle over there. The ikah bezayin kachim over there when you're selling the 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 pchayr and you're marrying up you're you're matching one piece of meat against a piece of meat which is not a pchayr that looks like a normal commercial activity and maybe every shul will say that that's not right you're insulting kachim and and likewise in amior ad kan le kamer rabban hasim you know why by pchayr the rabban say what they say mishum le mechzik uvnir chayl it doesn't look like a weekday activity measuring over there by pchayr one piece against the other piece. What's our concern? Our concern on Yom Tov, and by Kachim, there's no such concern that it looks like a mundane activity. Our concern on Yom Tov is it looks like a weekday activity. It's not suitable for Yom Tov or for Shabbos. 
Loy, maybe the rabbis would say, we think also on Yom Tov, you shouldn't be doing this. So you cannot draw any parallels. And therefore, the, and therefore, the, um, the halacha is not going to be like Rabbi Shua, the halacha like the Chacham over here, that you cannot use scales on Yom Tov at all. Says the Gemara, um, we will see that you are allowed to measure one thing later on. Says the Gemara, um, a side question. He told us a story about Rab Chia and Rab, and Rab Shimon. It seemed they were very particular. Each one wanted to make sure that everyone gets exactly the same size meat. So anyone well, remember the cup they had? Do you think they were so particular? They were such good friends. I'll give an example. But Hani Shev Beni said there were seven pieces of fish. The also the Bay Rebbe that was brought. It was Mikhail were brought to the house of Rebbe. And then later they, there were five pieces of fish were missing, and they found it in Chia's house. Well, the copy of Shimon Rebbe, of Shimon who founded there, didn't say a word. They were best, best friends. You want more fish? We give you more fish. And Rebbe Shimon wasn't jealous. So why would they be sitting there so particular on Yom Tov and measuring the meat, make sure you don't get a, you know, has to show them that you get a bigger piece of meat than I do. The Moshe says, you're right. Rebbe Shimon, says, you're right. Rebbe Shimon, the copy of Shimon, I'm going to pop up. Shadi Gavr Benai, we need to change the name, one of the names, and change it for another name. If the story happened, then the other person was Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yossi, that this happened with, and they weren't so close, so therefore they did measure, make sure they each one got equal shares. And if the story is about Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi, Rabbi son, then Ubar Kapara, the other person was Bar Kapara. Said the Mishnah further, Ein mashchizin esasakin beyamtiv. You shouldn't sharpen a knife. What what is the actual definition of uvdin dechol? Because like anything you do is like uvdin dechol. How do we know what what fits if it's that? if it's if it's either a commercial activity, so it looks like you're doing a commercial activity, or either it's purely fun, and therefore that is also uvdin dechol. Anything which is purely fun, so it doesn't contribute at all to the spirit of Yom Tov Shabbos or a football, is that uvdin dechol? Uh, some yeah. Well, you know that. Um, the Yerushalmi says, why did the mountain of Yana get destroyed? Because they used to play ball on, uh, on, on Shabbos. And there's two versions there where they play ball, there was no Eruv, so they were not allowed to. Or there was an Eruv, but it was Uvdin Lecha. So it's brought down on Shulchan Aruch. You know, for kids, everything is, is, is one thing. For adults, it's a little bit different. So that's what Uvdin Lecha is. But in the parameters of Uvdin Lecha are not so clear. They're not so clear. But certain things are very like, it looks like a, a transaction of selling, which is how you normally sell merchandise. That is definitely Uvdin <clears> Dechel. <throat> Says the Gemara, Ein mashchizin as a sakim in Yomtev. You don't sharpen knives on Yomtev. You're not allowed to sharpen a knife on a special knife sharpen on Yomtev. Avul masiyah gabe chavta. But you are allowed to take another knife and use one knife and sharpen against the other knife. It says in Shulchan Aruch that Erev Shabbos and Erev Yomtev, it's encouraged that everybody should sharpen the knives. And it says it helps a lot for shalom bias because the knife has a nick, it doesn't cut the meat properly, it doesn't look fit, and somebody can lose their, can get in, you know, a bit upset. It's very it's good for shalom bias. counterintuitive. You walk in the kitchen and find your wife sharpening all the knives or something, you might worry. Maybe <laughs> it's your job. Maybe it's your job to sharpen all the knives. She might. She might get worried. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, but on Yom Tov itself, we don't want you to, to do that. <clears throat> well, since, again, because Uvdin Dechel. This is, and anything you could have done prior to Yom Tif, this is called Machshiri Echel Nefesh, right? This is not, this not directly contributes to eating. This is something that supports your eating. And the rule is, well, one opinion is Machshiri Echel Nefesh is forbidden on Yom Tif. The other opinion is that you can do Machshiri Echel Nefesh on Yom Tif as well, provided you couldn't have done it prior to Yom Tif. And sharpening a knife, you could have done prior to Yom Tif. Uh, but on the other hand, if the knife became dull on Yom Tif proper, we'll see it's an argument. I'm going to wonder. Loi shanu. This is to my mash chesed eleven. We're talking about a sharpener made out of stone. Why? Because that really sharpens the knife properly. So it looks like uvdin dechel. Avo be mash chesed shalait, a piece of wood that you're sharpening the knife. It never really sharpens the knife properly. Then mutter doesn't doesn't look so much like uvdin dechel. You're allowed to do it to do it on yamtiv. Amar Rav Yehuda Amash. Well, that's what Rav Huna said. A general statement, not on a stone, but on wood. Yes. The question is, what? Yes. What not? And what yes? Because there's two possibilities why you're taking the knife and you're rubbing against the stone, either to sharpen it or to remove all the fats and pieces that got stuck onto the knife. So the so which one? Did Rav Huna said he made a distinction between a stone and wood. So what was he saying? The Mishnah doesn't talk about stone and wood. It talks about a proper sharpener, or 
a knife against a knife. Says the Gemara. Amr Yilam Shmuel. How the Amr? This that you say shall Evan us a stone is forbidden. This is the first version. Let Amr Ella Chadari. You're not allowed to use a stone if you want to. If you want the Chadari, you want to sharpen it. I will have a All you want to do is remove the fats. The Mutter you're allowed to. Miklal, that's by a stone. So obviously, the shell eight, when he's saying a wood is more lenient, I feel like I'm not with the wood, you're allowed to even uh, sharpen it. That's one version. Ika, the masla safer. The other version is that the comment was made on the end regarding you said wood is permitted. And that's what he said. You know when we say a wooden sharpener is all right? To remove the fats. Even though it's wood, if you're sharpening it, it's a weekday thing, you're not allowed to do that. Which means on stone, I don't care what you're trying to do, it's forbidden. If it's a stone that you want to sharpen against, even just to remove the fats, it's forbidden. That's the first two versions of how to understand the Hebrew school. Now we're going to say... Are we, are, we, are we talking in a business situation or in, just in a home, ordinary home? We're talking about an ordinary home, a knife shop. You're not allowed to use a dedicated knife sharpener for sure, because that's Uvdin Luchel, and you could have done it before Yamtev. What excuse do you have? And we're saying that if you're using you're, you're an irregular sharpener, there's different grades of irregular sharpeners. Stone, even though it's irregular, but it's still very uh, effective. A wood is not very effective. So, we so what, we learned, what we learned in the previous mission is also in the home situation as well? Yeah. Yes. So I think about it. Ika the master of Amas. Is it Gazaira or is it, does it have a Makor somewhere? This is the Makor. The Gemara is the Makor. What do you mean? Because this is, is part a good, of. Is it a Gazaira Midrabanon? Yeah, Uvdin the Chayil is always Midrabanon. And anything that you could have done prior to Yamtiv, there's no allowance for it on Yamtiv. Arise. Midrabanon is Uvdin the Chayil. Now, it depends. If the knife is totally useless, then you are fixing it. Then how are you doing something wrong? That's called machshiri oichel nefesh. And when it comes to machshiri oichel nefesh, we only allow, according to Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said you never allow. According to Rabbi Yehuda, is only if you could not have done it prior. And sharpening a knife, there's no reason why you couldn't have done it earlier. Eager the Masna Maslis and others learn that this comment is actually on our mission. Our mission says ein mashchizin as a sakim beyantiv. You don't sharpen. Does the mission doesn't spell out on what? When the Mishnah says you shouldn't sharpen a knife, and also what kind of sharpening? Is it only if you want to sharpen it? That's forbidden. But if you want to remove the fat, you're allowed to. One knife against the other knife, you can even sharpen it. Because it's totally not the normal way, irregular way of doing it. It doesn't appear to be in the choil at all. The Ikida Masna say for other learners say. That you're not allowed to sharpen a, a, a knife because you're fixing it up, and that's a, a, that's a kaminisa de raisa. But avol masir agabe chavta, or midrabbanon looks like you're fixing up. Avol masir agabe chavta. You're allowed to, um, you're allowed to um, against the use one knife to sharpen against another knife. Even against another knife, which is highly irregular, is only to remove the fats. Avol chadav to actually sharpen it. Us, it is forbidden because you're fixing it up. Make, even though it's not a real fixing, but it's something. The cloud did be much chesed, but a, a dedicated sharpener. I feel the havish even just to remove the fats is forbidden. Man tana de much chesed also. Who is the author that says that on, on a dedicated knife it, uh, sharpener is forbidden? Amar av chizde it appears the like Rabbi Yehuda. Sharpening a knife is does not directly related to food. This is supporting food. So this is called machshide oichel nefesh, and the rabbis hold that machshide oichel nefesh is totally forbidden on yom tov. Under any circumstance, not like Rabbi Yehuda makes a distinction with whether you, know, you could have done it prior or on. So if our mission does not allow you to sharpen the knife, it seems under any circumstance, the time you learn, ain't been yantif Shabbos, there's no different yantif Shabbos, the only thing you're permitted to do on yantif is things that pertain directly to eating. And Rabbi Yehuda matir, af machshili oichan nefesh. Rabbi Yehuda says that even things which support the eating is also permitted. Omele, Rabbi Yehuda, the Rabbi said, Rabbi Yehuda, is it true what I hear that they darshan in your name that the halach is like Rabbi Yehuda, even though he's a single lone opinion, the halach is like him, that machshili oichel nefesh, you couldn't have done prior, you could do it on Yom Tov. Um, he said to him, yes, and he used the expression, Yehei Rabbi, I wish, the whole kihani milyam al all these wonderful things, they should continue saying it in my name. No, it's true. I was once standing before Rav, I saw with my own eyes, he was taking the knife and he was passing over on the 
face of a uh, of a basket. So he's doing it on the face of a basket, which is irregular. And he's doing it on the face of a basket. And the Amri law, and I said to him, are you doing this to sharpen? Are you doing it to remove the fats? He said, I'm doing it to remove the fats. In other words, sharpening, it's machshiri oichel nefesh. I don't want you to do it. Sounds like he's following the chachamim. The machshiri oichel nefesh is totally forbidden. Removing the fats, you're not fixing anything up. So Anna wouldn't think it's all right. But the truth to be told, he said, the chazisi ledait, I clearly saw what was going on there, the lechadot de kavit. He was actually doing it to sharpen his knife. But kasava, they hold, halacha the ein maiden came. This is actually a fascinating thing. That there are certain halachas that are allowed, but because we are so concerned that people will mix up and they'll think this is allowed, something else will be allowed, we say halacha, do it personally, but they ain't came. So even if Shemar says that even to your own students, don't tell them they're allowed to do it. In other words, the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda, that you can even sharpen on Yom Tif if for whatever reason you couldn't do it prior to Yom Tif. And uh, But over here, we don't want to tell anybody. <clears throat> so they shouldn't start treating Yom Tov very lightly because what they're going to do is even things they could have done prior to Yom Tov will say, ah, I have plenty of time. If I don't have time today, I'll do it in Yom Tov. And we don't want that to happen. Says the Gemara. <clears throat> and these people over here, why they, they actually sharpen is because they couldn't have done it prior. Either it, it was nicked on Yom Tov itself, so therefore it got ruined on Yom Tov. They couldn't have done before. Or they had a really good excuse why they couldn't do it before Yom Tov. But we're worried others won't have these excuses. Remember, Bai Bai said a similar story happened with me. Have a came the Kamei the Ma'ar standing by from my teacher Rabba. Have a Kamei Abba Sakina asaf to the Chai. I saw him taking the knife even further, not only on a basket. I saw him actually using the stone, like the other view of Rabbi Shmuel. Even on a stone, if you remove the fat seal out too, or even on a stone, according to Rabbi Yehuda, you can do um, sharpening. I asked him, what are you doing here? You're removing it, you're moving the fat, so you're sharpening it. I'm removing the fat. The chazis in the diet, and it was clear, it was patently clear to me that the chadodik of it, that was actually doing it to sharpen the knife. Why Why is removing the fats not a weekday activity? Removing the fats, you need to eat. So therefore, you're allowed to do it. But you're not, you're not it, it, removing fats is not a weekday activity. You're cleaning your forks and spoons is also a weekday activity. Tell you only thing which are fun or commercial. Removing the fats is not commercial. You need to be able to, you know, if you remove the fats, you'll be able to get to the sharpness of the knife. Uksavar, because of the opinion, halacha the ain't made in king. It's a halacha, but we don't publicize it. Interesting, it's brought down in Shukhan Aruch. So I guess they assume that if you learn Shukhan Aruch, that means you have certain entitlements, you can do these things. If you didn't, we're not going to tell you about it. Iboilu, we have an interesting question. We know that yeah, there was a takana that you always show your knife. So, I mean, here we're talking about butchers, actually, according to most Roshanim, that they have to, or the, the, the shaykh team, they have to show their knife to the road. And if they don't show the knife to the road, according to some Roshanim, it's not good shchita. And therefore, when they do show the knife to the road, it's as if the road is fixing it up. It's like we said before, it's like a din where you're making, transforming something from, from something invalid to valid. And you cannot do that on Yom Tov. You're making a tikkun. So, are you allowed to show it or not? Ramon Ibn Avi Nabiza showed it. He allowed it. Rabban asked you. Rabban said, no, you're not allowed to show it. But Avi Yisav Amit Tamachachim really allowed it. Tamachachim can, because for him it was never us. If you're a Tamachachim, the Sheikh is a Tamachachim himself, he can see it for himself. So it was never forbidden for him. So when he permits it, it's not like he's making a din, and therefore he can do that on Yom Tov. Uma Shilachin, once he, allow, he says it's a kosher knife, he can actually lend it to the Sheikh. Or Rabbi Yisav. Sakin Sha'amdam, what happens on Yom Tov proper? Something happened to the knife, it fell down, it lost its sharpness, became very, very dull. Um, now, we're not talking about a knife that complete, completely dull, you cannot cut. Because if you cannot cut, you're fixing it up on Yom Tov, and we don't want you to do that on Yom Tov itself. However, here we're talking about it became dull, but if you put pressure, you can still cut. So then it doesn't look so much like you're fixing it up on Yom Tov, you're allowed to. The honey mealy, when do we allow you the postka got You still cut if you press it down. So it's not completely ruined. And therefore, because it's not completely ruined, you're just, uh, it doesn't look like you're actually making a big takana. He said, whether it's a knife that became, that was ruined, Abiyazib said, a knife that became ruined, that became dull, was nicked on Yom Tov itself. Or, uh, shapud, that's a spit, shenirtzim, that the tip broke off. 
So therefore, you, it doesn't really work. You can't put it through the meat because there's no tip there anymore. The echad greif is tanderikurayim. Let's say that some cement or something fell into this oven and you have to remove it. Otherwise, it's useless. That's how Rashi learns. Tesla is a little bit different. Um, can you fix it up or not? So these are all machshidim oichel nefesh. These are all things to support eating. This is the argument of Hidra Bonu. Tanya, now he just spells it out we had before. According to the rabbis, the only thing you permitted to do on Yom Tov is things which directly benefit eating. And Abu Huda Matir, Af Machshide Eichel Nefesh. Abu Huda says they can also, even things which support eating are also permitted on Yom Tov. What's the basis of their argument? My time at the Tanakama, what's the basis of their argument? Oh, my God. It says in Posse, it says regarding Yom Tov, Yom Tov Mikra Kodesh, Kol Melochel, Yas, you shouldn't do. That which you can eat. Only that you can do. So they emphasize the word who. Who Only think food itself. You can cook and bake, but not the things that you need to support your cooking and baking. And Rabbi Yehuda says, Rabbi Yehuda Amar across the pasuk lachem. It says in the pasuk there, who levada yasel lachem. Lachem usually means. Like we had more of Beza, it means completely yours. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you need for food, including things which support food. Says the Gemara of Tanakam, Oxil Lechem. What does Tanakam do with the word Lechem, which we already had previously? Amalachil said, Aul Lechem, you know, he does with Lechem. To you, Veloyle Nochrin, you cannot invite Goyim because you might cook for them extra. But we also had Lechem, Veloyle Clovin, for you and not for your animals. Vidach Nami, you cannot do Malacha for them. Vidach Nami, Xiv Hu. But what's uh, what's up? You can do with the word who? Amla who uksiv lachem. Have two words. One word who, which is very limiting. Another word lachem, which is all inclusive. It's very exp- it's expanding. But like kasha. So this is how we learn. You're definitely allowed to also use things which support food as well on yom tov. But uh, and you're allowed to even do malachas with it. Machshidin she'ev shalasayis me yom tov. Sharpening a knife you could have done prior to yom tov. Mahatayr is forbidden on yom tov. And can be machshin and she ef shalasayis me yom tov, but things which you couldn't have done before yom tov. For example, they broke on yom tov proper. You can fix it on yom tov in order to eat according to Rabbi Yehuda. And that's the halacha. But again, we ain't waiting. Om Rabbi Yehuda Shmuel. Rabbi Yehuda's name is Shmuel. What about a shapud? What about if you have a spit? It didn't break completely the tip, but shenitz if it bent out of shape. Also lesakne be yom tov. We don't want you to go ahead and fix it on yom tov. Says the Gemara, especially if it happened before Yom Tov, because you could have done before. Gemara Pshita, obviously. No, no, no. Loy, loy, no. We need it in the case that I forgot the Maf Shabi You don't need any special tools or implements. By hand, you can sort of bend it back into shape. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to do that. Gomer Ibn Mishmul says, Abhi Nei Mishmul, Shapud, should soloi by Boss, Abhi Yudha Sa Nei Mishmul, that once you use the spit, to um to make your meat afterwards it's mias now so therefore it becomes muksa you're not allowed to move it around on yamtiv. Rav Ada Barava Omer Rav Malkiyoy. Rav Ada Barava says the name of Rav Malkiyoy. And that's important because every time we mention an argument that he's involved, we always bring the same Gemara down to make sure we have the name right because there were two rabbis. One was called Malkiyoy, and one was called Malkiyo. And it's very confusing. So every time we have the same thing as we'll have it now again. Says the Gemara. So first, Rabbi Adabarava said the name of Malkioi. Shaimtai, you can slip it out of your hand. You can sort of slip it and do it. It's called tiltul menatsat. Don't openly carry the, 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 the spit and put it away somewhere. So let it slip out of your hand and make sure that it, it falls in the corner. So you can do tiltul menatsat. Even though it's mukta, on certain muktas, you're allowed to move it if you don't move it the normal way. The only time you're allowed to do that is if there's a piece of meat on it. So therefore, it's not really that much mukta. Ravina said, even though there's no meat on it, you're allowed to do that. Why? It is no different than having a thorn in the street that's posing a danger. And there the din is allowed to move the thorn, you know, less than four hours to get her off the street, even though we don't like a person carrying it a, a certain distance and carrying it less than four hours at a time. But they were allowed to do the same thing over here because it's me, it's, you're allowed to move it away. So Ravchina says, I want you to know that Ravchina, um, the Salavika said, there were three arguments, and you should remember this. Shapud, 
The, this thing about spit, this is malkiyoi, and shvachis, about a, a, a woman, the responsibility the man has to a wife and a wife has to a husband, and says of there, no matter how wealthy the husband is, and he might, well, having more service all these laws, and he might have a hundred maids in the house, the woman still has to do certain chores, because if she does nothing, it's not healthy for the relationship. So that's the law of shvachis, and the law of gumais, that when a, a, a girl or a boy has two cyrus, two here, that's reaches puberty, they are considered bar mitzvah, bas mitzvah. And then he said that if you see the, you don't see the actual follicles, you don't see the hair itself, but you can see the little holes inside the skin, as if the hair used to be just fell out, that's good enough. Those are all said, by, um, these are all rav malki yoy. However, the discussion regarding bluris, bluris was when they were, for those who worshipped Avay Dezora, they used to shave the top of the heads all around, the circumference of their head, and leave in the center a bulk of hair. So if you're a Jewish barber and uh, you have no choice, what you do is three fingers before that bulk of hair, you stop, make the circumference, a much wider circumference than what they need. And uh, that's blueness. And eighth and mikla, not putting hot ashes on your uh, on your body, on your wound, because it looks like you get, it's, it's gonna make a permanent scar, a permanent stain, it looks like you're making a tattoo. And we learned you're not gonna make a tattoo from the tire. And the third thing is gvina. He explained why cheese of a goy, gvinas akum, is very different than chol of akum, that even if, the, if, if you eat, drink chol of akum, we don't eat cheese of a goy. And he says over there, one of the reasons is because they used to smear the cheese with pig fats to make it shine. That was said by Rabbi Malki Yo, not Malki Yo, but Malki Yo. Rabbi says, Masnitin or Masnita. Rabbi says, No, my rules are a bit different. Masnitin or Masnita, if it's a Mishnah or a Brisa, that is Rabbi Malki Yo. And Shmaita, if it's just a, a logical halacha, that is Rav Malkiyoi. The Simonach, you want to remember that, Malkiyah means a queen. The Masnisin is Malkasa. If you want to remember that, you should know that the Mishnis are like royalty, are like the queen. And therefore, it must be Malkiyah, not Malkiyoi. So you want my Benayu, what's the difference which rule you want to use? Ikebenayu Shvachas. How are we going to deal with the case of Shvachas? Because Shvachas is actually a mission. According to our Papa, it's Malkiyo who said it. And according to Rabchimna, it's Malkiyo who said it. Okay, that's how you remember. So this ends the Gemara for the first day of Shemini Atzeris. When it says, when it says, a quote, Spirashut Harabim, does that mean anything uh, that is a danger in Rashut Harab Harabim is loses the status of mukta and you can move it? If it poses a danger, you can move it. The Chiddush here is not so much about the mukta, it's more about the, um, that for sure. But we're talking about, there's a law, even though you're allowed to carry less than four Amas, we don't want you to carry 500 Amas, you know, and go three Amas, stop, three Amas, stop, because we're scared you're going to eventually walk more than four Amas. But we're going to suspend that prohibition if you want to do it to protect the public. If I have my bris instruments in a tray and it's sitting on the bimah in shul on Shabbos and the kids around, I can pick them up and move them. They're not mukta. First of all, you had that in mind before Shabbos, didn't you? Yeah. That you should do. Uh, so then it's, if your knife is a special kind of mukta. It's called mukta machmas sarin kis, which means you have a very expensive it's valuable. knife. Sorry? It's very it's valuable, valuable and it's very highly special. So it's a very high level of mukta. But... Um, so first of all, you have it in mind, question of that word, but because you're doing it to take away and remove the danger from kids, for sure you lot. The question is whether you should try and make a little bit of a shin, you know, carry a little bit different than you normally carry, if you can. Okay. Kum la Labla Gemara, and now we are doing the Gemara of the Simchas Torah, which is Davchov Tes Amaralov. Today we'll start from the Mishnah of Cheser in the very bottom of the page.